Calling Tangible Parish School Board meeting to, uh, to order May 3rd, 2023. Uh, roll call, Ms. Cindy. Ms. Richards. Present. Mr. Toller. Here. Ms. Abrams. Here. Mr. Westmoreland. Mr. Duncan. Here. Mr. Anthony. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. Piazza. Here. Ms. Dominguez. Present. At this time, we will have our Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and Mr. Joey Piazza Hello. do the honors. So uh, I wanted to call up uh, our guest today. It's going to be Miss Gamble and Miss Leslie. She, they will be doing our Pledge of Allegiance. From Champ Cooper. It's I, pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ladies. Again, those are some of our students from Champ Cooper, so I want to thank them for being here. And then to say our national anthem, we have some of Punch Tool High's choir students. We have uh, Miss Bromfield and a few others to sing our national anthem. Oh. So let's welcome them in. Thank you ladies so much and thank you Miss Robertson for all of the hard work you do at our choir program. Thank y'all so much. That was beautiful. At this time, uh, item D, we'd like to consider approval of board minutes of April 18, 2023. So moved. Tom. Second. I'll second. Okay. Second by Miss Rose. Any questions? Call to vote. Voting is open. Yes, Miss Cindy. Yes, Miss Cindy. Yes, Miss Cindy. Uh, yes. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. At this time, we will have awards and recognitions. Item A, recognize the recipient of the Ennis Jake Bailey Jr. Award, Above and Beyond, Ms. Robin Abrams.
transmission. If I could have this break from Dallas to come forward. Give a little information about this recipient of this award. Remember, I was meeting such a large crowd tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it's been about three or four months ago. I was leaving my office. Those of you who don't know me, I'm the supervisor of student services. I'm housed in a special services building down in Hammond. It was about almost five o'clock, and I could make my way down. And Mr. Matthews is seated there with a young man, and there's some special education staff um, in the building. And that's sort of our normal proceeding. I can tell when we have like chairs in the lobby that we're doing our talented evaluation. <clears throat> so I kind of teased with Mr. Matthews and the special education staff that was sitting there, so I wasn't quite sure why he was there. I said, Oh, I said, Are y'all trying to see if he has an exceptionality? I'm curious what that might be. And they were laughing with me, and they said, And I said, Why don't we kind of caught up and see each other in a while? I said, What are you doing here? And he said, Well, I learned last year that um, many of my students were sent for talented evaluation, but they had difficulty getting to the center and getting the evaluation complete. And so I'm trying to put a stop to that. I actually brought a young, I think it was a young man, um, I, for his talented evaluation at that time. And I, drive, I live about an hour from here, so I'm driving home. And it just really <coughs>
So, um, adults, it's not my forte. I talk to children. Uh, so I'm just going to look at them and y'all can listen. Um, I, I want to thank you guys for recognizing the hard work that I do. Uh, but I do want to say that the name of the award is Jake Bailey uh, Above and Beyond Award. Like, that sit well with me because for me, it's a job. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do whatever it takes to get the job done. So I don't look at the things that I do as being above and beyond. It's, it's the job. And I will say that as a, a building principal, the job nowadays is way more challenging than it has been in the past. But it's the job. And I'm thankful to have such a wonderful team of administrators and staff that support me and support my vision for the school or our vision for the school to do the job. So while you guys are recognizing me for going above and beyond Brandy, it's the job. As long as I'm here, I'm going to do the job. Okay. Next up on the agenda is to recognize our 2022-2023 You Be the Chemist Award winners. Um, Miss Glenda Husser is going to be presenting that for us.
they see it as their job. And I appreciate you. <coughs> I also would like to thank Ms. Dilly, Ms. Virginia, Dr. Cassell, and the board, and Ms. Jackson, for their continued support so we can continue to do this wonderful program. But you're tired of hearing me speak. Your students want to get their awards. So without further ado, we're going to start with third place. And forgive me if I mispronounce your names. I'm a science person, not an English person. Okay. So, third and third. Okay, we're ready. Okay, so first is Kelly and Jealous. Parents, feel free to move forward if you need to to get a good picture. Next up on our agenda is to recognize our 2023 Beta State Convention Award winners. And Ms. Fusell is gonna handle that for us. While she's coming up, I do wanna assure 
all of you that we will be taking a five minute break after we finish with our awards and recognitions. I don't want y'all to think we're gonna hold you hostage through the entire meeting. Um, but we would ask that you give Ms. Fusell her, uh, your attention as we recognize our next uh, award winners. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Well said. Um, I'm actually going to introduce Ms. Erin March to come up and um, recognize our students. But what I want to say about Ms. March is that she has a passion and a vision to expand data in our district so that every school has an elementary, junior, or uh, high school beta. I was a high school beta member. Uh, beta Globe is where um, I really still like public speaking. I do it all the time. Um, and she's going to go up. She represents the elementary beta clubs at the state level. But tonight she's going to recognize from elementary, junior, and high school beta state members. Ms. Mark.
online competitions. If you are from Ponchatoula High School, please come up here to stand with this march.
plays in spelling bee written and oral. Please come up. All right, I think we have one last uh, recognition, Ms. Fussell. Um, we have another Louisiana Comeback School to recognize. Four more.
Whatever you want to do. And we just stay up here and stop to do one all together. We'll do one all together. Our next school, LaRonja Middle School for ELA. And if you're with, if you are a faculty or parent or student of any of these schools, uh, please stand up. If you are, recognize any of these schools as a parent, student, faculty member, please stand up. All right. Thank you. All right, at this time, we will go ahead and take that um, that five minute recess um, and we'll be
Mr. Moore and Mr. Jinko. I'm sorry, Madam President. <laughs> you got yes. trouble. <laughs> oh, it was Ron's fault. Of course. <laughs> okay. Um, at this time, we're going to go ahead and do our public comment. Um, Ms. Ms. Yolanda Frazier, and as she come, I just want you to let you know, Ms. Frazier, that um, the board is not allowed to speak back to you, so we don't want you to feel like we're not listening and that we're attentive. It's just that it's the policy, okay? Thank you.
ask you after school please remediation class. I didn't, no one notified me. I just took it upon myself one day going to the school, checking it, make sure everything is right there. Like, oh, oh, he, he needs to be going to after school. And I told no one notified me. And they told me, well, we send it to his email. Every year at the beginning of school, I always tell it like, if you're going to send it to him, send it to me. And they were like, well, they're young adults. And I say this, they are young adults, but they're young adults in training. Even I don't open my email every single day. So a lot of stuff they never told me about, I stumbled upon by me at, not by school getting in touch with me about it. He had his 504 when school first started. I kept calling. When will we have the test? I mean the, the meeting. Because I know he did it every year. The lady stated to me, oh, he has everything in order, but we're behind a little, but we'll get to you. Periodically, a couple of months, a month or two, I'll call him back. I got that meeting two weeks before Easter to go to the meeting for his 504 accommodations. And school was about to be out. So they told me he got it. I'm not sure if he got it. But if I didn't ask, I wouldn't have known. It's like no one never called me. I might have been two teachers there. You know what called me? Because every year I make sure I know all the teachers. I give them my information. They know they call me. It doesn't matter. I'm at work. I'm coming. So I didn't get those calls. And if I did not check on that, he would not have gotten an after school tutoring. And they had started maybe a couple of weeks to a month before I even found out about it. But when I found out about it, he went every day. And I inquired about that. If I had known, he would have been there earlier. So that's my concern. I won't, I understand he's not going to be able to get a diploma. But he passed everything from school. I just wanted him to have the experience of graduating with his peers. And some school yes, he's going to. But I that's what I need. Thank you, Ms. Frazier. Okay. Next on the agenda, um, I'd like to, to put this in, in official minutes. On Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023, myself and several board members, Robin Abram, Joy Piazza, Trent Anthony, Jerry Moore, Rose Dominguez and Superintendent Melissa Steely attended the LSBA Capital Conference in Baton Rouge at the State Capitol where legislative updates were given and we were given the opportunity to meet with our local legislators. So please enter this into the official minutes. Thank you. Um, also, I just kind of like to mention also that um, May 16th is Sumner High School graduation. So we're going to need to choose another day for the board meeting or cancel the board meeting. So we'll, we'll talk about that, Ms. Cindy. Okay. At this time, consider committee reports. Item A, Capital Outlay Committee of the Whole for April 18th, 2023. I make a motion to accept. Okay, Ms. Rose, can I get a second? Second. Second, I'm spread. Okay, questions, comment? Call to vote, Ms. Cindy. Voting is open.
Voting is closed. Mm -hmm. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, yeah, mine is not coming up. Okay, at this time we'll have the superintendent's report and recommendations. Yes, Madam President, um, for, for item 4A, we would ask the board to consider approval to refer uh, policies GBK, that's the employee discipline, and GBCA, which is the protection of a criminal background information um, to the policy committee. Madam President, I would like to refer GBK, employee discipline, and GBCA to the policy committee. I'll second. Voting is open. Yes. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Item 4B, uh, we'd like to ask the board to consider approval of the certificate of substantial completion for the Martha Vineyard Elementary School Hurricane Ida re-roof project by Roofs Restored USA LLC. I'll make a motion to accept. Okay, Ms. Rose, accept. Second. Second by Mr. Tom. Any questions, comments? Call the vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Other board action. Item A. Consider approval of Erickson Renewal CPA for the 2023-2026 auditing RFP. Mr. Jeff. Yeah, he would ask you based on the uh, scorecard and Erickson Crenshaw being the low um, proposer to award them for the next four years. Uh, the current uh, author of the board uh, chose not to submit a proposal. And we also met with uh, Paul Riggs with Dennis James. Second. Sure. Second. Okay. Any questions, comments? Call the vote. <clears throat> Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Item B, consider approval of First Guarantee Bank as the fiscal agent for the fiscal year of 2023 to 2027. After reviewing the proposals, uh, they gave the best interest rate and were the most responsive to the request of the proposal. So we would ask that we uh, reappoint First Guarantee Bank as the fiscal agent for the next year. To adopt administration recommendation. Second. Second. It wasn't even close. Okay. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Item C. Consider approval to enter into a purchase agreement with Trinity Properties of Hammond, LLC, for the purchase of 18 or more acres located on Yoakum Road in Hammond. Uh, Mr. Trent Anthony. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to start by stating that, like you guys, I have some questions about this particular property. And um, as the last contract did, this gives us the opportunity to have all those questions answered. Um, also, as a reminder, we do have the funds already approved to purchase this property, which is why I think it's important that we at least entertain the possibility. 
Um, so we already approved this contract once before. However, there's been three changes, some of which are to our advantage. And I'm gonna briefly summarize the three changes. Um, so the seller felt like, and, uh, and I agreed with him, that we had a 120 day due diligence period and we could have gotten to the finish line in day 120, the board could have canceled with no repercussion. So there is still no repercussion. However, um, what the seller and, and, and I kind of agreed upon to kind of get this to fruition is that the board decides whether or not to move forward within 60 days and then we have an additional 30 and a 30 day extension for the administration to do their part. If the administration discovers they can't get the funding or it's not approved or whatever, they can opt to back out at that time. However, um, the owner would like commitment that the board agrees that the purchase is going to move forward within 60 days. So we went from 120 to 60. However, we still have the additional 60 days to get all the nuts and bolts figured out. Um, number two, I'm going to skip to number three because this one's uh, to our advantage. So we have, because we're getting a smaller parcel, the real estate agents have agreed to furnish the survey for us. So now we don't have to pay for a survey. And number three, um, there was a line in the contract which should have been removed and not there originally that required the seller to make certain repairs. And in typical real estate contracts, there's no requirement inside of the original contract that's always negotiated after inspection period or during inspection period. So basically, the only change that we really have is um, he, the seller would like board approval in 60 days. So to get to that point, I'll go through this quickly. I've kind of made a little timeline and I can email this out or make copies. But what I suggest that we do if we move forward today is have a one or two week period for the board to view the property and make a decision as to whether or not we want to hire inspectors. So we'll have two weeks to walk the property Get, get knowledge on the building and things like that. And then at that point decide we want to spend any money to have physical inspections. Uh, weeks, so we have eight weeks total, right? Weeks three to four, I would suggest having the physical inspections take place. Weeks five to six would give us time to review the inspection findings and decide whether or not to request repairs, cancel, move forward, ask questions regarding cost for maintaining the facilities, cost for running the pre-K program, all of that to take place between weeks five and six, and then seven and eight would be await a response from the seller and review answers on cost for the maintenance, the school, scope of renovations planned, et cetera. So we have eight weeks to do those things. I think that's a substantial amount of time for us to say, yes, we wanna move forward or no, we don't. So again, as a reminder, um, this only gets us into the process of buying the building. It does not obligate us to purchase it. Just gives us an opportunity to research it. So it's just like it was before with the exception of those couple changes. And I'm gonna also say, just like y'all again, I wanna reiterate, I'm on the fence as well. I'm not proposing that we buy the building. I'm proposing that we have an opportunity to see if we wanna buy the building. And so that's it. Oh, and I will add this too. Um, I will say what I am in favor of, whatever gets us to universal pre-K, I'm in favor of that. We, we have to provide some spaces for our constituents to get their kids in school and to pre-K. It's gonna get us set off on the right foot, so I am a proponent of that. Okay, Tom. So first question, so what is our monetary investment? Do we need a motion? Yes, you need a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. Okay, Robin. And I'll second. Okay, all so right, Tom. What is our monetary out of pocket except for if we decide to do an inspection, what is our monetary out of pocket for that eight week time frame? Uh, zero dollars. Yeah. We're not committing to a deposit. We're not. That's correct. No so deposit. nothing's changed. We, we um, that was proposed back from the seller and we've renegotiated to where, again, the only thing that the seller wants, and I agreed with him, is that we could have gone through all the steps. And again, on day 119, if we don't get board approval, We've, we've spent money, we've wasted his time, we've wasted our time, and all of a sudden we say, no, nah, can't get approval. Well, it just kept his building off the market for four months, and it would be kind of unfair to them. Um, so I agreed with him we on that. We still do it day 59. Yes, yeah. or 60, yeah. Madam, <clears throat> Madam President, I do have a comment, uh, not so much a question. Look, I, I'm all for universal pre-K. That is not 
anything on my mind. I'm not saying that I'm for or against this project, but I, I'm going to say this, two comments. One, we sat in here as a board and asked for a list of all the properties that we own as a tangible parish school system. I would like that list before we make any decision on purchasing this building because we shouldn't be purchasing property when we don't even know what we have. Second, I know the administration has plans for these buildings and I agree with the pre-K plan. I would like to see that at way ahead of that week mark because that's gonna be probably the biggest decision that we're gonna to have to make on it. We know we have Esther's dollars to purchase the building, but as far as the budget's long term, we need to know what this is gonna entail as a project from the buses to the cafeteria, to the staff, to the renovation. These are things that are gonna haunt our school system for decades when it comes to our budget. <clears throat> so that cannot be done in two weeks. That needs to be done for maybe two months. It just depends on how quick we can get the information and how quick we as a board can review that information and discuss and see where we are in that, in that protocol. So that's my only comment on it. Thank you for uh, bringing it up. <clears throat> okay, and I, I, I would just like uh, to make everybody aware that uh, prior to um, prior to submitting a, a, a building, prior, prior to submitting a plan, that we, sh that we are required to submit a, uh, a planning study to show how how this how this this purchase is going to impact uh, desegregation? Uh, also, <clears throat> this this property is located on the south end. I mean, on on, on the almost furthest south end uh, district in our in our parish. Do we want to transport four four year olds from Kentwood to? Yoakum Road. Do we, do we? I mean, my my idea of of, of early learning is that w we should have an early learning facility for every elementary school that we have. I, I think that we could do this in much smaller because I am a hundred percent for early learning. But I, I think that we could do this by <clears throat> either purchasing facilities or using what we have to build using properties that we have to locate these early learning facilities in the areas so that we can minimize busing and for parents who drop their kids off before they go to school they will have a you know they will be able to do that i i think it's an i think it's an, an uh, um an insurmountable number number of dollars to be to pay for one facility on, on, on one end of the parish. And we could, we could actually take the money that I anticipate will, this will, this will cost us in the end. We could, we could actually do a, a number of early learning centers with, that, with those funds. May I respond to that? So just from general knowledge of the classrooms that have been built over the last year or so in eight classroom buildings running this on the inexpensive side four million dollars so you're getting 12 classrooms here for six and 17 acres and a sanctuary and it's next to one of our schools already and to your point about you know having preschools inside of our communities we have a school next door to it's a six seven eight but it is a part of our campus kind of already you know half of it is and um enjoy just a to add to your point, again, we're not asking to buy the building today. We're asking to whether or not we should enter into, or enter into an agreement to explore the purchase of the building. It, it's not gonna hurt my feeling. Look, don't vote your conscience, but this is just giving us a chance. It gives us another week or two to talk about it and, um, and decide if we're gonna move forward. Again, I don't, I don't have a horse in the race. I would like to see universal pre-K. I think this is the quickest way to add classrooms for that. and. Um, and so that's why it's important to me. Yeah. I, I do have one more question, Madam President, uh, and this is to administration. I know we're using ESSER funds to purchase this building if, I mean, if it goes to fruition. What is our timeline on the uses of that, fun, of that fund? The last, the, the last date I heard was 2024. Have y'all heard something updated, Joe? Yeah, September 2024. Yeah, and, and concerning those ESSA funds, uh, 
you know, my idea about wh what we should be doing with those ESSA funds uh, is an immediate need, you know, for the, uh, the mental health and stability of, of our kids. I mean, we need counselors. You know, we, there, there, are, there are immediate needs to use those funds for. Um, and, and I, I you know, and I, and I can't balance, I, you know, if I, if I weigh them both, I mean, that probably we would balance out uh, when it comes down to pre-K and addressing those needs of our, uh, of the, uh, the state of mind and health, mental health of our children. So, I'm, 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 I'm you know, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not more facility oriented as I am uh, health and welfare of our kids, safety. Um, not, not being argumentative with Mr. Moore, but I, I do want to just mention that I have a different view on these ESSER funds. Um, you know, if we, and we've looked at it, I think the last time we talked about this specific issue, we, I even kind of went through and talked about how we've already used most of these ESSER funds. And if you go back and you look at that list, most of those dollars th thus far have been spent on things that really only the students of today are going to benefit from them, right? I mean, they were, we spent a lot of them on teacher salary supplements. We spent a lot of them on um, technology. Some, some technology stuff that's going to expire. I think maybe a, a couple of playgrounds, things like that. But, but my view, really, if you really think about these ESSER funds, this is a once in a generation opportunity. These ESSER funds are something that I don't believe will happen again, uh, hopefully. Um, may, well, I don't want to say, yeah. they have, this, this is a once in a generation type thing. Um, and the ESSER funds, in my view, um, we ought to be looking at a generational investment. Uh, in the way that we use those dollars, meaning that an entire generation ought to have the opportunity to benefit from these funds because it's not going to happen again. Um, so, uh, you know, certainly it does not mean that, that the uh, social and emotional well-being of our students aren't important, um, that the other things that we've looked at are not important. Um, but we are coming to the end of the opportunity to be able to use these funds, and it is my hope um, that at least a significant portion of these funds will be used for the purpose of making a difference that will last an entire generation. I don't know if this project is that opportunity, um, but I, I do hope that as a board we really start thinking about as we come to the end of these, fu these funds, um, that we are looking for a way to make a generational type difference. Um, you know, a building investment certainly does that. Making in a long-term investment in to early childhood education certainly does that. Uh, some other type of building that maybe will be around, you know, for 40 to 50 years. Those are the types of things that I think we can be looking at. Um, but I hope we don't get to the end of this pot of money and we go, oh my gosh, what what did we do? Where did it all go? You know, did we really make a huge impact? Did we really take advantage of this opportunity uh, to make the biggest impact that we possibly could for our community? Um, so anyway, that, that's it. Ms. Janice. Uh, well, I was just going to, I agree with Joey and I agree with uh, Brett both. We have an opportunity to get this one-time money I'm not sure that this is what we need the one-time money for. I think we do have a lot of issues on our campuses that would fit in the ESSER money that need to be done immediately, and we don't have the money for. So instead of buying another building that we have to keep up, another campus that we have to have grass cutters and lunchroom people and bus drivers and the whole campus atmosphere, it's not just buying a building, it's operating another building. We, we're having a difficult enough time keeping up with the buildings we have, I feel. I know we need new sewer system treatment places. I know y'all have already put money aside for the HVACs, which we desperately need. That's a security issue for our schools. That's a safety breathing issue. 
we need we needed that and I think we've already used money for that but there are just a lot of other things to me that are much more important than having another campus to run I think that putting more pre-k on the the house campuses we have is a better option as well mr. Moore I just I, don't, I just feel like it's going to be a burden to transport four-year-olds on a bus and I don't think parents are going to do it unless they live in the neighborhood. I just don't feel like anybody from the north end is going to put their child on a bus. And then we don't have buses now. We have no bus drivers. We have, we're waiting a year on 40 buses. We, I, just, I just don't feel like it's a good investment for our money. And that's just my opinion. Nothing against the building. Nothing against the seller. Nothing against the idea, Ms. Dilly. It's, I, I just feel like we have a lot already that we need to handle and take care of without adding another campus to the house. All right, we're, we're talking about $6 million. I mean, that's a lot to you and I, that would be a lot of money if we had it personally. But on the level that we're talking about, $6 million is really not a lot of money. If we're gonna do one something for one campus or try to fix something on one or two campuses, we have to look at seven campuses or all of our campuses and divide the six million dollars across all of them because if Ponchatoula is going to get something Sumner needs something if Sumner gets something LaRange is going to want something we have to make sure that we're doing this money across the parish and when you divide six million dollars across the parish you're not really getting a lot of money what are we going to do with a couple hundred thousand dollars per campus you're not really building a whole lot and I understand the whole point about having a whole nother campus to, to keep up with and maintain. And that's not going to come for a while because there's going to be things we're going to have to do to get it ready. But if we don't do something with this money before September of 2024, we're going to lose it. And I mean, the only other thing, possible thing I would say to put this money towards, one, buying every bus that has air conditioning in it. Or two, put in air conditions, as Mr. Tom said, air conditions in every one of our gyms. But I wouldn't want to put an air condition in Independence High School gym. It needs to be demolished, in my opinion. So, you know, that's a wasted money. So uh, unless we're going to do something that all of the schools can benefit from with this $6 million, which you're not going to get much, we need to look into doing something for in one area and, and seeing what it's worth. It's only going, he's only asking that we entertain the thought. He's not asking that we go buy it tomorrow. That's just my opinion. And I'm gonna piggyback off that. To alliterate, it's not just $6 million you're asking for though. You're asking for the maintenance of the building for a lifetime. That's way more than 6 million. That's a lot. Second, to piggyback off Ms. Rose, we have a lot of facilities that are housing less amount of students that we really ne don't need a big whole campus for that we could minimize, save us room, and use some of those buildings for pre-K. Neesom holds how many kids? Uh, the Tall Betty holds how many kids? They don't need these big campuses. You could combine certain schools to eliminate certain campuses and use this infrastructure we already have, just update it for your pre-K. Throughout the, throughout the parish, on top of all the other properties and things that we own throughout the parish that we don't even know we own. I, I think, I'm not arguing that we don't entertain the idea, but before you enter into an agreement to even think about it, I feel like we as a board need to be prepared for what we're entering to. We don't even know what it's going to entail. We don't know any plans. We don't know how much it's going to cost. We don't know. There's a lot of uncertainties for a 60-day window for a board to make a decision when we're not really on a timeline to move forward with this just yet. We have until 2024 to make a decision. I'm not saying we push it to 2024, but maybe another month, let the administration come forward with some actual plans like we would any other thing that we ask any faculty member to do when they come up to, with an idea, and then we come to this vote. Then we entertain it and go look at inspections. That's all I'm asking. And, yeah, and at that time, you know, Mr. Piazza, unfortunately, there may not be a facility that's for sale. You know, not saying that it would be, but, and I just want to quickly say, and I was going to not bring a whole lot because 
I do agree with the idea of looking because I don't see any harm. As long as there's no monetary loss for us to do the research other than an inspection probably, it's, it's not a, it's a no-brainer. It's just looking for information. But I will say this. We keep talking about a plan and how much it costs to do this, how much it costs to you know, keep up a facility. We all know what the demographics of our parish is. We all know that we cannot house the current students that we have on the south end in the facilities that we currently have, which is why we're doing phase one and phase two to increase it. Phase one and phase two are already gonna be outgrown probably in the next five years. We already know that. And here's a facility in Hammond that has classrooms, auditorium space that, we're, that you know, Trent's asking for us to at least enter an agreement where we consider it. So that's my soapbox on that. What uh, Robin was talking about with the air conditioners, I, I do think that's, and I'll talk about that in my board member comments, but you know, I still, and I catch a lot of heat from my end of the parish when they say, why are y'all, you know, why am I talking so much about a project at Yoakum Road or at Ponchatoula or whatever, because this parish is represented by this board. And we either handle the growth where it is, or we have to start busing the growth to where they can fit in a classroom. And I understand the concept and, and the problems with desegregation, and all the other issues that we face as a board, but we have to educate children. And it takes square footage to educate children. And anybody that's anything to do with construction or facilities can look at this and say that this is something that we need to consider. Because right now, at the current rate that we're going with our building projects, we cannot afford to continue to build new construction to solve all of our problems. We have to get creative. We have to find square footage that we can afford, that we can put into use. And if that's on the south end, so be it. But anyway, that's my two cents. And just, just you want to go for it? very quickly go ahead. to just point out what, one thing Mr. Toller said. There is not a campus that we have south of a meet that has any unused capacity. Exactly. Every single one of the campuses from a meet, well, south of a meet high school is over capacity um, and either uh, and, even, and in temporary buildings. I don't, We're going to have to make some big decisions as a board. This is exactly what uh, Mr. Except said. maybe except for Greenville Park. Yeah. We're going to have to make some big decisions as a board as far as new schools, new high schools. Mm -hmm. So just my last point, and I'll, I'll leave you all alone. We're not certain we can get our hands on any more ESSER funds. I mean, is that, would you agree with that? Yeah. So this is, this building is paid for. It's, I would hate to lose $8 million of building that's paid for. And then we, we go try to get air conditioners. They're like, nah, we're out of funds. I mean, so I just feel like it would be a tremendous waste to, to not take advantage of this. And I, I'm kind of like, uh, I said I wasn't for this building purchase. I'm, I'm for researching this building purchase 100%. And, and that's really the main reason because when it, whenever we, we didn't come to an agreement on the contract, I was like, Phew. you know, thank God. But then I was thinking, man, it's $8 million we just flushed, you know? And, it, and it's a place that we know we have 12 classrooms already. If we use it for nothing else, we have 12 classrooms there. That's the cheapest um, 12 classrooms we're gonna ever get. And I'm not, t even if we had to pay for it out of our budget, we, we don't build buildings that cost $6 million anymore. Champ Cooper's a 10 classroom addition, it costs us almost eight. Um, the ones that, the little boxes that they, they've kind of added on to campuses are three and four million for eight classrooms. So we just, we can't build for this price. And that doesn't include the 17 acres and that doesn't include the, the sanctuary that we can lease, we can use for graduations. We'll save $35,000 a year for not paying Southeastern. Um, and last but not least, uh, this is kind of going off of Tom's point, 75% of our population is below University Avenue. And we haven't built a campus down here since, I mean, 1985. And, and here we have an opportunity to add a campus, uh, 17 acres to build additional buildings. I just feel like if this was coming out of our budget, y'all wouldn't hear this argument, but this is an opportunity to get a free campus and I just think it's it's too good of an opportunity to pass up so yeah, just just the one last thing all right so I I, I uh, see uh, Terry and, and um, Mr. McKinley I, I don't know if we've done a planning study on this property 
Uh, I don't know if we, I don't know, I don't know anything about the inspections. I haven't seen the results of those. But I mean, there is a lot to consider, you know, in, in purchasing this property. Um, like I said, I, I know that we went over, over budget um, on the Yoakum Road School, you know, and, um, and, and I, I think it was significant enough to make me um, uh, cautious uh, about getting into purchasing another property in that area. How much did that cost? Well, one more thing with that, Mr. Jerry. Back then we didn't have Terry either. Mm -hmm. And I'm confident that he's gonna make sure whatever we do, we're gonna save money when it comes to uh, those kind of things. We didn't have Terry back then. I, I agree, <laughs> I'm just, I agree I'm with just you saying. and I wish that we had, I wish that Terry had already done what we need so that he could give us this input. Mr. Duncan. I'm a, yeah, to Mr. Moore's point, the, the administration would not be authorized to explore any of those questions that you're asking without first the passage of this of this agreement. They you know they can't get the inspections that we're asking right. for until we first enter into the purchase agreement. They can't do the study or submit anything to the desegregation court until we first authorize them pursuant to the, to this resolution. Uh, to make those explorations and bring us that information within the, the due diligence uh, period. So getting the answer to those questions, Mr. Moore, is the purpose of, 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 um, of passing this resolution and entering into this uh, a, agreement. Uh, it would, is authorizing the administration to get us those, those uh, answers. Okay. Okay. Call for vote. Voting is closed. Motion passes with Ms. Dominguez, Mr. Moore, and Mr. Piazza voting no. Okay, now moving on to personal privilege. Mr. Joy, we're gonna start on your end. Thank you, Madam President. I'm so glad you brought it on my end this time first. I promised my colleagues I was going to keep this short and sweet tonight. Uh, I want to thank my visitors tonight that came and did the National Anthem and the, and the Pledge Forest. Uh, they have amazing programs at Punch Little High and the Choir. And Champ Cooper's got a lot of shining stars that I like to, to bring out. Um, if we, we may or may not have a uh, board meeting for the next part of this month, so I want to go ahead and congratulate all of our graduates. Punch Tula, LaRanja, Sumner, all of our graduates across the parish. It is a major achievement to get out there and get that diploma with your peers. And it just signifies on what the accomplishment was that you've done throughout your educational journey. Uh, this week is also Teacher Appreciation Week. I want to thank every teacher that we have here in Tanchpahoe for, like Mr. Bobby Matthews said, doing the job that has increasingly gotten harder and more demanding. Thank you for what you do for our students. Thank you for what you do for our parish. And thank you for the, what you do for the next generation to come. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for all that hard work. Don't have much to say, but do keep up with what's going on in your legislation right now. We went yesterday to a conference. We got to go to, to the Capitol and listen to some things. A lot of things we can control here, but there's a lot of things that we can't control. Um, there's supposed to be some pay raises coming down for, God, for the teachers and stuff. I don't think it's going to happen. Contact your legislators. Let them hear your voice. We can only do so much on a local level. Congratulations to all of our graduates that are going to be graduating soon. It was Principal Appreciation Week this week as well. To all of our principals that have to wear that um, boss's hat and you have to be stern sometimes we appreciate you and to all of our teachers thank you so much for all you do and we hope that you have a great great summer all right
right, I'll be really quick. I just want to echo what Robin said too. Um, the pay raise didn't look like it made it out of committee. It's not too late for us to get that reintroduced. So I would recommend anybody that's listening, of course, to call your legislators, but it would probably be a good idea if somebody from the system itself could send out a message to our teachers and administrators and have them contact their legislators. We have a 20, I'm sorry, a 3,000 employee strong system and they need to hear it from the 3,000 people that are in our community. If you wanna get the students' parents involved, ask them about it too, but um, I think that's a good way to get the legislators' attention. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just wanna congratulate once again the UB Chemist winners. Um, my son and daughter both have done that before and it's really a neat program. Also the beta winners and also the comeback schools. In my area had Roseland and Spring Creek and I am extremely proud uh, both Spring Creek and Rosen were, uh, their scores in math is what did it, and my wife teaches math at Rosen, so um, <laughs> I am extremely proud of her and to see the work that she puts into it. Um, she works harder than I do, and I work three jobs, and um, she works just one, and I will tell anybody that, and that is true. Uh, and then what we mentioned earlier, I just want to reiterate, and I'm going to probably start bugging everybody on this board about this, and I'm definitely bugging uh, Mr. Terry about it and the superintendent, but ACs in our gym. Uh, after hearing some testimonies from other school districts around us that have been doing this, um, and on my end, of the, on my end uh, it's even, I hate to say even more important, but our schools, we don't have auditoriums. We don't have facilities at our schools for us to have parent night, for us to have awards banquets, for us to have anything like that. And every time we have it, it's always in a hot building. And I, I've heard it since I've been on the board now, um, you know, and I've always told them we have other things to solve. We have other things to solve, and we do. But then when I was talking to a contractor this week that was doing some bidding at North Oaks, and one of the quite, he they've been working in Livingston Parish putting these in, and started talking numbers, and I was really amazed that we're not talking about astronomical numbers. You know, we're not talking about going in and re-plumbing a building and putting duct work. We're talking about package units sitting next to a building blowing cold air into a building that can be circulated by these fans that we've been putting in. Uh, this is not something that we, we can do this. Mm -hmm. We can do this. And when Brett's talking about generational changes, That's think about what that changes for an environment, for a school system like Sumner, for instance. And I know y'all know I'm prejudiced towards Sumner. Right. There is nothing for them. There's not a building for them to get into to have some type of event. And for that to be in our community, I could see a lot of people utilizing our gym for things. Kentwood has it. It's always been a blessing. There's always events being held at Kentwood. Y'all know Kentwood graduations have been in their gym for many years. So I believe as a board, we need to tackle that. First, starting with the schools that do not have auditoriums and working our way down the system. I know Terry has mentioned that as far as working through um, some of our federal funding or whatever we can do to try to put that into place. But um, I believe that is an immediate problem that we can help solve in our parish to get our parish up with surrounding parishes it also helps with teachers we have teachers that are leaving PE teachers because they don't have a comfortable place to work so anyway that's my soapbox um, I, one last thing if it's any indication about the number of teachers from other parishes that have contacted me about wanting to come apply for Tampa Parish whatever we did worked because I've been inundated with people saying I want to apply people from Mississippi that are wanting to come down and work on the north end of the parish and people from other parishes unfortunately that want to come to our parish so whatever the administration has done whether it's the, the stipend or what um, something's helping and I'm glad to see us getting some new certified blood in our school system so <laughs> well, that's good to hear Mr. Toller um, I will a hundred percent agree with what you said about the air conditions in all of my years that has been the biggest request of parents basketball parents volleyball pa parents in general about the, the gym and having air conditioning that has been my biggest request so that's that's definitely something good to think about uh, thank y'all for your comments about capitol conference it was an honor and a pleasure we led that we stormed the capitol and uh, it was a little chaotic in there they had a lot of other uh, groups that were there along with us but our presence was known and we were recognized and we were there fighting for our teacher pay raises fighting for fully funded MFP and I think we're making a difference but we do need to contact our people we need to contact the legislators 
And it, it's very important because it didn't get out of appropriations. I'm not sure what they're gonna do with it, but we need to bring it back. And I also want to congratulate our own assistant superintendent, Mr. Ronald Jinko. He graduated from our Level Up League for future superintendents. He was recognized and an honor. We appreciate your joining that and what you learned. We hope that you gained immense education on that. And we thank you for being a part and for our system for sending you. <clears throat> uh, thank you all for coming. I think it was well worth, worthwhile that we went and we gained a lot of knowledge. Also, congratulations to all our graduates. Thank you to all our employees. We are working hard for you, whether you're a teacher, a bus driver, or a lunchroom person, or a maintenance person, or a classroom teacher. We're, we're very appreciative of you, and we wish you all a great summer. Yeah. First of all, congratulations to our, <clears throat> our, our recipients tonight, all of the uh, different awards, and, and to the graduates. Um, a shout out to all of the teachers who have engineered that throughout the year and, and gotten them to that success. And um, I, I, I know that the year is ending and, <clears throat> and, and, and my heart goes out to every teacher who deals with our kids today. And um, <laughs> I've, I've, I've talked with several of them and I think you guys have done an excellent job this year. Uh, and I want you to know that I, I appreciate, you know, what you have to go through. But these kids are worth it. They're our future. And, um, and, and just be encouraged that love conquers all. And everything that we do from a social, emotional learning and, and curriculum aspect uh, is going to pay off. And we just have to be consistent with it. just want to remind everyone um, we kick off our graduations uh, next Wednesday on the 10th uh, starting with Amy High School and this year we uh, backed them up till 6 o'clock they start at 6 p.m. Um, instead of 7 I think last year it was 7 we did that so that families had time to go gather after graduation and you know a lot of them go eat together do go back to the home and have get together so starts at 6 p.m. Also, Southeastern is implementing a lot of security measures, and so clear bags um, have to be used in the university center. They'll do security checks where you walk through a metal detector. That's going to take a little time, so I encourage people to arrive early uh, to go through that. So it'll be a little different this year compared to years prior, uh, but all of that is to keep everyone safe. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just mention for everyone to be in prayer about and thinking about the family and um, that has two students that attended Neesom Elementary School that drowned over the weekend. Uh, just devastating for the family. And, and I just want us all to be thinking about them and um, during this time, it's a very difficult time for that, that family and also the school, the school family. Okay. To wrap it up, I'd just like to say congratulations to the teachers, the principals, and the bus drivers. That kind of happened back to back to back. And we just want to say that how much we do appreciate all that you do. Um, also, I'd like to say congratulations to Mr. Jinko. We're proud of you. Um, again, but I'm all excited because none of you all got me this time. And I was looking for Tom to get me. Uh, we want to say congratulations to Spears from the Punch to Land. You missed it. I don't know how you missed it. I was like, <laughs> y'all yeah, missed it. For Spears. And Tyrus, that's right. That's right. We had Wheat from A Meat, uh, Spears from Punchatula, and TP3, Trey Palmer from Kentwood High School. And we're, we're proud to say that they're in NFL drafted and that's right and Tyrus Reed from Amy and then we have Osiris from Greensburg and St. Helena Parish so we're so proud of those young men so we have something to be celebrating in our parish it's amazing how many NFL players we've had come from yes yes right it's amazing I think it's those weight room investments we that's, what it <laughs> that's what it is okay Anything else? Oh. 
Oh, the board meeting on the 16th. You can call a special one if you need it. Okay. All right. Second, second it. Do we have to second yeah, it? We'll yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll vote on everything important. We don't need At Southeastern. Southeast. We don't need to vote. We're just announcing that. Okay. So we're just announcing that um, we're going to cancel the meeting for May 16th. But because, if something comes but up, if, you'll call a special meeting. Okay. But if something comes up, we'll call a special meeting. Okay. 